Hi, guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Blondest Podcast. I'm your host, Savannah Boda. And I'm your co-host, Tyler. And I am alive and well from my surgery. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you might be like, Savannah, why do you have an ace bandage wrapped around your head? And that is because I had chin lipo. Amongst other things. Amongst. We did a lot. You know, he just went all out. You know, I was like, if you're going to go under, you might as well just do it all. No, honestly, I would do the same. Yeah. And I got a really good deal. It was like, buy one, get one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was like, buy an area of lipo, get an area of lipo. No, I'm kidding. But um, I was already going to be doing my breast reduction. So I was like, you know what? They're going to be putting me under. I really don't want to do many surgeries in my life in general. And there has always been, you know, an insecurity with my like double chin. And I've done Kybella. God, like you've been with me like half the times I've done them. I feel like you've done it probably like six, six to eight times. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's so expensive because it's like what, $750 a vial every mm-hmm. time you do it. So by the time you do two of them, you could have already just like gotten neck lipo. Um, so I was like, whatever, I'll just do that. Um, and then I also did my bra fat, which is always, this has been such a big insecurity for me since a young, young age. Um, it's just, it's one of those things that people just have, you know? And if you don't know what it is, if you're watching the video, you can see, but it's like, it's not, well, it could also be the underneath part, but it's like right here when you wear your bra, it just pudges out. And so I've had that like since birth. And even like when I was younger in dance, like I never wanted to wear leotards or, you know, sports bras. I mean, God, I haven't worn a spaghetti strap since I was like six Mm -hmm. because I've been so insecure about my arms. And every time people take a picture of me in like a swimsuit, like I always have to like tuck my bra fat in like the swimsuit before they took a picture or I'd have to have my hair like, you know, really long to cover, you know, that area so you couldn't see it. So I feel like my whole life I've been like just battling with that insecurity and I, you know, even at my thinnest when I was going through my eating disorder, like I still had it. It was always there. I had a personal trainer. I mean, I literally tried everything you could to work out that area, but it's just something that a lot of people have. And when I talked to my surgeon about it, he's like, it's just such a stubborn like pocket of fat that people get and it's genetic. And, you know, really the only thing you can do is lipo to get it gone. And I mean, like, if you're already doing your boobs, yeah, like, I feel like, it's, same it's, area. like the, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. So we did that. And then I added my chin. So yeah, she added her chin after I gushed to her about how I wanted chin <laughs> lipo. And then I was showing her before and afters. And she was like, I'm going to add that to my surgery. And I was like, OK, fuck you. <laughs> like, But I think I'm going to do it soon. Yeah, it's really not that bad, honestly. Like, out of every area I had, I feel like the chin area has been the easiest. It's just, like, really annoying to wear this wrap. Oh, yeah. We didn't even call attention to the wrap. Yeah. But, I know, I feel like it can't... I mean, the videos of it are so scary. Yeah, the videos are scary. But, you mean, you're out, so you don't even know. But I, like, I just recommend if you're gonna get it done, like, don't watch a video because it's really just... No, it's... It makes you want to throw up. Do not (laughs) watch the videos. Like, I... I can't believe how they do it. It literally looks like a serial killer, like stabbing someone. But yeah, my husband was like, thinks that if you are a plastic surgeon, that you just like have to be like a little bit fucked up in the head to like want to cut through people. But then I feel like that with like any kind of job, like that's like you could say like a veterinarian, you have to be fucked up to like want to put animals down to die. You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to people. It's just like have to because it's part of your job and there's good and bad parts of your job, you know? Yeah, like surgeons save They're people's artists. lives or plastic surgeons they change people's lives but mm-hmm. yeah i think yeah i mean someone has to do it well i uh, like we talked about this but i feel like the first like the first time you do it or like the first 100 times you do it you probably like throw up or pass yeah. out like it must like be so yeah it's just like disgusting for people but, like, like things and some people don't like for me like you know some people might think popping pimples is like m- oh, disgusting yeah, for you sure. know Or, like, for me, like, I think I could never be, like, a dental hygienist. Like, I think that's disgusting. Like, I would hate working in people's mouths, but, like, they, like, get off on it. So, I bet, like, surgeons get off on, like, you know, it's just, like, satisfying. It's, like, satisfying content. Content? Maybe. Yeah. But. But it went well. Yeah, I'm alive. This was a cursed surgery. Yeah, I really honestly was so scared to get it done. I thought I was going to die. No, yeah, like, she... I told everyone, I, I told Tyler he could have my Chanel purse. <laughs> Purses? Just, or I just said one? purse because if Cyrus <laughs> decided 
he either wanted to wear them or he wanted to give them to a lover or a friend. Fair enough. Going to him. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I would give you one. But no, this was. I think we tallied it up. Okay, let's just go through it and tally it one more time. Okay. Yeah. So when this all begun began, I always wanted breast reduction surgery, like since I was a kid, because I okay. We'll just go back to like story time of Savannah's childhood. I was an early fucking bloomer, okay? I started my period really young when I was, like, 11. I grew boobs at, like, 11. I had a full D cup in sixth grade. And people would always, like, talk crap about me. And the girls would be like, Savannah stuffs her bra. Like, Savannah is a bra stuffer. And I remember one day I went home and I was so frustrated that I was like, I literally am going to make a Facebook post for everyone to meet me at the local park. And I'm going to flash them. <laughs> So that they can all see that they're real. Like, my boobs are real. My mom's like, don't fucking do that. Yeah. Like, please. I, I don't think that would fly. But I was like, but mom, they keep saying I stuff it. She's like, let them say it. Like, let them talk. Like, you know, let them bully you. Like, they're just jealous that they have, like, little ant bites. And, like, you're fully <laughs> developed at, like, sixth grade. And so, like, all the boys liked me. Like, because I had big ass tits at such a young age. And <laughs> it got me a lot of, like, negative attention from, like, girls hating me. And just, like, feeling insecure. And, like you know, swimsuits and stuff. And I remember my mom, like we were going to go to Mexico and she was like, you can't wear that swimsuit. Like you can't wear this. And like all the girls my age were wearing like these cute swimsuits. And I like, my mom was like, no, you need to wear like a halter, like one that like comes up to your neck and stuff because I, we don't want you getting like negative attention like that. Like when we're, it's just not, you know, just cause I mean, we're in a, you know, foreign country and just being a young girl, like my mom just didn't want older men Old men are gross in general. Men in general are gross, but she just, like, didn't want to have to worry about, you know, you don't want to, like, if you're on vacation, you're trying to relax, like, the last thing you want is, like, old men gawking at, like, your fucking, like, 13-year-old daughter, you know? No, that's So fair. she was trying to, like, you know, but it caused me a lot of just, like, frustration and, like, made me hate my boobs so much because I'm, like, I can't wear what I want to wear. Like, my parents are so unfair to me. Like, they wouldn't let me wear certain things that other girls got to wear and, it was just always a problem. And then, you know, when I was even at my thinnest, I had such big boobs that like things wouldn't fit me correctly. Um, you know, like I would just be a small top, but like my boobs were too big. So things wouldn't zip and then I'd get it bigger and then it'd be too loose in my stomach. So like I've had this issue since I was like literally 12. Right. And I was so over it. I've always wanted a breast reduction. Um, my entire life, I've always wanted it. And then, you know, as I got older, I, you know, started having issues with, you know, an eating disorder where I lost like 20 pounds in a month in high school. And that just really does a toll on, you know, the integrity of your skin quality. Um, when you like gain weight or lose weight super fast, you know, it just like loosens that tissue. So my breast started to sag at a really young age. And that was something that I mean, when I started to be sexually active, I mean, I used to be so, ins and I mean, they really weren't even that bad <laughs> compared to what they looked like after Cyrus, like, goddamn. But, like, just for me, you know, when you see these movies and you see these girls and, like, for girls I was friends with that had, you know, C cups or D cups and their, you know, nipples were up and, like, mine weren't as perky because um, I had loss of skin quality. And that's something my surgeon said to me, too. Tyler came to my consult and he was like, yeah, it's not just, like, having a baby. Like, you in general, like, either from, like, gaining weight, losing weight, like, fluctuating a lot. Like, your skin quality is just very thin. Yeah. You know, like, I just don't have a very strong um, breast tissue. Like, it's just very, like, thin. Mm -hmm. And so, anyways, um, they started to sag, you know, in high school. Not a lot, but a little bit. And it made me so insecure. And then, you know, it got to a point where, like, I felt like I couldn't wear, you know, outfits without a bra you know, dresses or things like that without my boobs looking saggy in them. And I mean, I was just like, you know what? I'm so young. Not right now. I mean, I am young, but like at that point I was like, what, 19, 20. I was like, I'm so young and I want to like live my life and feel hot and feel confident. Like this is like, you're, you only live once. You're only going to have this body once. Like one day you're going to be 80 and like, you know, can't wear these things. Like I want to live in the moment. And like, I want to be able to just fucking feel confident in myself, yeah. you know? And People and can rat on plastic surgery and anything all day long, but like if it's affecting you and you have the money to fix it, fix it. You know, like life is so fucking short. You only have this body once. Like we're only on this planet for a short amount of time. Like wear the fucking dress, you know, get the fucking surgery, kiss the boy, like do the shot, take the trip, like just live your fucking life, you know? 
And so for me, I was like, you know what? I was making good money as a solo esthetician back in 2019, right before COVID hit. And I was like, I'm going to fucking do this surgery. And I had it scheduled on the books, ready to go. The next week was my surgery. COVID happened and they completely like stopped doing elective surgeries. So I couldn't get it done. I was like, okay, that fucking sucks. Like that's terrible. So, um, waited it out all through COVID didn't get it done. And then I rescheduled it. I can't even remember dates now, but I got it rescheduled um, for that like spring once COVID had cleared up. And then we had the snowpocalypse in Texas where like everything froze. And so there was like no electricity in the hospitals. And it was like the day before my surgery this happened. So they're like, yeah, like we don't have any electricity or the electricity is unreliable. Like we don't want it to like go out like while you're under and then like you fucking die. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we're going to cancel it. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And so then I rescheduled it for like two months later. And guess what happened? You got pregnant. I got pregnant. (laughs) I was pregnant. And I was like, okay, maybe this was God saying like, you know, have a kid first, like your tits are going to look like fucking shit after like, just like wait and have the kid, you know? And so I had Cyrus and I really was like, you know what? I'm just going to wait until I have all my babies. But you guys. Post Cyrus. Like. If you thought they were bad before. (laughs) (laughs) They were so bad. Like, I, like, remember, and I gained, and also you have to remember, too, I gained so much weight with Cyrus. I gained 80 pounds. Like, I I was huge. I was a mammoth. Like, I I was so, no, I look back at videos, and, like, it's so funny. Like, when you're in the moment, and I feel like you just don't realize how much weight you've gained until, like, you look back at photos, and you're just, like, yeah, no one, like, you're, like, I was big. Like, I was really big. Like, I will never gain that much weight again. It was so unhealthy, honestly. I mean, you just gave in to every craving you had. Oh, yeah. And you were like, I'm pregnant, so it's okay. Yeah, and I think it was like the first time, like if we're going to talk about, you know, mental health and eating disorder stuff, I felt like it was the first time in my life I was like allowed. Yeah, like you felt like, okay, well, I'm pregnant, so I'm allowed allowed to to eat whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So I was like eating everything I like deprived myself of for, you know, 24 years, all in nine months, (laughs) you know? I bet it felt good while you were doing it. Oh, it was great. I was so happy. (laughs) I was so happy. Like, I mean, I ate everything that I told, like I never had, like had Taco Bell, you know, before. Like I had fast food restaurants that I told my myself I would never fucking eat you know I went from eating one meal a day to eating four to seven (laughs) no or just like really big meal portions yeah I mean I remember there was one time where like I I told her I was like this is not okay because I remember I came to the spa one time (laughs) and she had ordered Taco Bell delivery and there were like y'all I'm not talking like eight of those bags like eight Taco Bell bags and I was like how much did you spend she was like I don't know like ninety dollars and I was like how does how do you spend ninety dollars at Taco Bell? I've never seen someone spend ninety dollars at Taco so Bell. Funny. That's like ordering three of everything on the I menu. Think that's what I did, but it wasn't just for me. It was also I for know, the team. It was for the staff, but it was it's just like me. I've never seen so much Taco Bell in my entire life. No, it's so bad. Like I eat so much, you know. And I mean, it's growing up. Um, and I talk kind of talked about this when we talked about like our, the podcast about like you know family and mm-hmm. how we were raised and stuff. And I've talked about it before. But for my new listeners that haven't started from the beginning of my podcast, know like my full like story. Um, you know, I grew up and I think a lot of our parents, especially, you know, in, if you're around my age, our generation, like you can see it's all a TikTok trend right now, too. Like the almond moms or, mm-hmm. you know, the ones that like, you know, yeah. are like, oh, you're not hungry, you're bored or nothing tastes as good as skinny feels or, you know, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips kind of moms like that's the kind of mom I grew up with. That's the kind of mom my mom grew up with. Like diet culture was a really big part of my mom's life, my grandmother's life. And it was, you know, passed down to me where, you know, you weren't pretty if you weren't skinny and like food was like the devil. And then on top of that, you get thrown into getting your dad's genetics, which the Bodas, the Boda side, they thick, they thick with it. Okay. Like that's where I got my tits. Like my mom's boobs are fake. My grandma's boobs are fake. All my mom's sister's boobs are fake. (laughs) My dad's side of the family, everyone has G's, F's, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. The Bodas have the boobies, okay? The Boda boobs. And, you know, my rounder face shape also comes from my dad's side. Like, everything. Like, my mom's side, like, they just have a really fast metabolism. Like, my brother got my mom's genes. Like, my brother literally could eat anything and, like, 
there was a point where like he was depressed because he was so skinny and he wasn't like bulking up. And so he started eating like, you know, like 4,000 calories a day, like in high school to try to gain weight so that he could bulk up. And like, I had the opposite issue Yeah. where it was like, it's I like, look at a cake and I gain 10 pounds, no, you know, and, and being a female, I was like, I remember I used to always at night just be like, I wish we could just switch because he'd be so happy. I'd be so happy. Like we'd just be like, it'd be perfect. Right. Yeah. Like I would not have to worry about what I ate. And so my mom, I love her to death, but you know, she used to always pick on me and be like, oh, I know I feel so bad for you. Like you have your dad's jeans. I wish you had like me and Nick's jeans, like, you know, and had that fast metabolism, especially since I was a dancer and I was in dance and, um, you know, I was in like tiny co- like dance moms. Like if you've ever seen dance moms, like that's the kind of competitive dance world I was in where it was like hardcore. Like I literally remember my mom being like, if you don't beat this girl, like I will take away your DS. Not the DS. Not the DS. No, she did. She was like, if you don't, and I'm not going to say her name because, like, I feel like people know her in this area because she's, like, an influencer now. But... Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. You, have you to probably know her. She went to Flower Mon. You'll know her. I'll tell you. Okay. We'll call her Peyton. We'll call her Peyton. Okay. She was like, if you don't beat Peyton, I will take away your DS. Like, my mom literally used to threaten me with, like, stuff like that. Like, it was, like, hardcore. Well, you were telling me one time that, like... The dance instructors, like... Oh, yeah. They would yeah. diet culture. Yeah. my One of my dance teachers, she was like, your fat roll and your beginning pose when you're bent over, it needs to go by next week. That's literally what she said or to me. Or the Chick-fil-A thing. Oh, yeah. That one, too, is bad. We had a Chick-fil-A next to the dance studio, and they, like, had a sit-down meeting with all of our parents, and we're like, your kids are not allowed to go to Chick-fil-A. If you bring Chick-fil-A into this building, we will throw it away. If we catch you at the Chick-fil-A, you will be reprimanded. reprimanded. <laughs> and then they also had this thing where they made us run around the building. And the only way you could stop running is if you threw up. And it literally was like hell. Like, I feel like child abuse. Like, I feel like no, not that, like the shit wouldn't fly. Absolutely not. But like, they literally, this happened in like a suburb. Okay, guys, in Flower Mound, they literally made us run laps around the building. And you could not stop running until you either threw up or passed out. And I remember I couldn't throw up and I was pissed because I was like one of the last ones going. I would have fake fainted so <laughs> fast. Like second lap, I would have dropped to the floor and, yeah. you know, like like fainting go or like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I would have yeah. quit so fast. <laughs> remember how yesterday when we were getting our nails done, you were talking about like how y'all were talking about like emotionally abusive like teachers versus oh, yeah, like yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. you love. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like all my dance teachers were just, like, so, like, emotionally abusive. But did you not like them? Did you hate them at the time? Or no, like, like, I them? feel like they made me stronger and gave me yeah. character. And, like, I, like, I always have needed someone to be hard on me because if you give me an inch, I'll take a mile. Yeah, no, me too. That's what I... I'm Because I, like I was talking about, we're like... Little, me and you are little shits. Like, we need <laughs> someone to be, like, no, fucking sit no, down. Because <laughs> I was talking about, like, in the music world, like, I grew up going to a teacher for who was, like literally like my first lesson when I was like 14 years old walked in and he like had a box of tissues next to like where he taught in his house and he was like that's for when you cry like just keep that in mind and I was like okay shit's about to get serious (laughs) and he was like a complete asshole but he made me so much better yeah and like I went to college for music and then my teacher was like this sweet Japanese woman who was like (laughs) literally like all compliments was not me and i was like i don't know what to do like you know what i mean like Like, bully me no exactly (laughs) like i feel like i can't get better if you're not like telling me i sound like a piece of shit yeah i need someone to push like i need to cry but then i'm like do i need therapy for this (laughs) like maybe this isn't what i should be wishing for yeah (laughs) but i know i've always like you know it's like a love-hate relationship when people are hard on you like that like and that's how i feel about my mom you know it's like she did it but also The reason I don't, and like I've talked about this before, the reason I don't hold a lot of things to my mom is because of the time that we are raised in and like what, like we've talked about this, like even like what's socially acceptable now, like if you watch a movie from the 2000s, like the kind of words and like the the kind of content, you know, misogynistic, racist, homophobic, like people laughed at those kind of jokes in the early 2000s, like no one laughs at that now. So I feel like the jump, I mean, everything changes in a decade, right? Yeah. I feel like it's just everyone's more sensitive and more emotionally aware in a good way now and sometimes in a bad way sometimes i think it's like too much yeah like i feel like my brother for example like my mom was so hard on me like Mm -hmm. so 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 strict so hard and my brother had like the complete opposite upbringing and he's like a little shit so it's (laughs) like you kind of need to cry a little bit yeah absolutely a little bit i used to sit in my room and stare at the little photo booth (laughs) picture of me and my mom at the chuck e cheese while she like 
yelled at me or whatever and just like want to rip it so bad just sitting there crying like that's my trauma oh my it's god like, that's so funny that just like pulled up a core memory for me in my laundry room my mom had all these <laughs> photos of all of our family with the little like no what are they tack pins what are they called oh yeah yeah like a little it's a tack yeah yeah on like a little cork board and mm-hmm. one time i got so mad that i x'd everyone's eyes out of all the photos i bet she was pissed i bet nikki was pissed <laughs> literally like everyone's eyes except mine i like Rrr. oh my god she was probably like you need to go to therapy yeah my kid's trying to kill us <laughs> no i literally got the tum thuck and like literally cut everyone's eyes out but that's, that's like demented <laughs> child behavior okay they pissed me off okay it's fair <laughs> See, I'm like, I was more of a gentle heart. No. I just stared by myself at the picture You're crying. You're like, I want to cut it. And no. I'm me, I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, but anyway, yeah. So I had a lot of eating disorder stuff, basically, was what I was getting at in my childhood from dance and just culture and stuff. And so I fluctuated with my weight a lot. And like my boobs were just saggy. So, and yeah. I could never get rid of my bra bulge. So then, anyways, it got canceled because Can- of Cyrus. Because of Cyrus, yeah. So we're on three cancellations. Yeah. And then it got rescheduled. Well, and then I like was like saw my tits after Cyrus, and I was like, <laughs> "Honey, this is but, not it." So this is when she decided that she felt like the surgery was cursed because she was supposed to get it with a different surgeon. Yeah, I switched surgeons. At so this point. Uh, yeah, whenever she was looking to get it done again, she went to look for a different surgeon, mm-hmm. which I'm so glad I did. Nothing against that guy. He cool. The first one? Yeah. He was all right. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's like... He's just a, not Dr. Dow. He's like an older, more yeah. like... No, Dr. Dow, shout out. I love you. You're yeah. the best. Like, you are king, the king. Like, I love him. Like, mm-hmm. I will get every surgery that I ever get for the rest of my entire life and existence with Dr. Dow. Like, he is the creme of the crop, the I best also, of the best. Is it wrong for me to say this? But I feel like you want, like, an attractive... Like, he's hot. Yeah, you want an attractive <laughs> plastic surgeon. I don't know why, but I'm like... Just but makes see, me at feel first, more... I didn't. I was like, I feel like I'm going to be embarrassed by them seeing me. Okay, like, that's fair. That's fair. Because he's like so mm. good looking that I was like, I don't want him to see me like that. I was like, I just felt like an old man that's just like, I don't go fuck if you see me naked. Like, yeah. you know, because you almost get insecure. You're just like, hey, like, it's just like showing like a super hot guy your saggy tits. Like, no one wants to do that. Like, that sucks. That's fair. But I mean, but, I mean he has like a wife. And, kids, and, yeah. But I mean, it obviously, like, unrespectfully, like, you know, I'm married and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. he, I mean, we can't just sit here and be like, he's not an attractive man. He is attractive. Yeah, he is. Very attractive. He knows it. Everyone knows it. But anyway. So first time you went to schedule with him. Yeah, I got scheduled. And then they called me and they're like, we have to move your surgery to a different surgery center because we just found out the surgery center that we use, there's an anesthesiologist there who's been drugging IV bags and they've had 11 deaths. And I was like, oh, that's comforting. Yeah. I was like, cool, cool. Um, no, it's a really bad story, guys. So there is an anesthesiologist in Dallas, demented man. Who was going in and drugging IV bags and he killed like 11 people and how they found out was like one of the doctors at the surgery center like took an IV bag home she like wasn't feeling good just wanted to get some extra fluids going and she died and they traced it back to the IV bag and this poor 18 year old boy he like had I can't think it was like his ankle or his knee or some like just very like easy or like routine surgery, surgery yeah. like had a heart attack um, and they didn't know what it was from. And it was from the IV bag and he passed away. And so it's just so fucked up. Honestly, the whole story is so scary and sad. But this happened in Texas at Baylor Surgicare North Dallas calling y'all out. But that's also where I just had my surgery, which we'll get into. But yeah, um, yeah so, so I they was were like, switch. yeah, switch me to First Baptist Medical Center. Which was like a little more expensive fees there. I don't know why. But I was like, you know what? It's because okay. they're not drugging people's IV bags. <laughs> they're like, this is the safe option. <laughs> That's so. not even where I ended up going, though. Yeah, I know. So they switched it to that. And I was like, so a different date to that surgery center. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, and then this is where she started to spiral a little bit. Because she was like, wait, is this surgery like actually well, cursed? Yeah, because like, when they I- call you and they tell you that there's like a drugged IV bag. Because like first I was like, okay, COVID okay, snowstorm, like, that's a natural, you know, whatever, pregnancy, like, it's in God's hands, you know? And then the drugged IV bag, I was like, like, that's just so specific. Like, you're just like... (laughs) You're like, what are the odds? Like, this is time number four that it's having to get moved. And... Like, that's just a really big thing to be like, literally, I just had gotten back from Tulum, ready for my surgery the next week, and they're like, oh, yeah, like... No, you were supposed to go, like... A couple days after. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, no... 
like our that surgery center is like full investigation like yellow tape around the building yeah like, like they're like checking every IV bag. bag and they like did a full sweep of the entire place and like fired a lot of people apparently but that was really scary so I was like at that point I was like mm. you started to get nervous that you were actually like destined for death yeah I was, like, I was like god is literally trying to like keep me alive like if I do this surgery like I will die yeah and then y'all kind of know from the previous podcast but she was so sick so sick I had walking pneumonia, pneumonia. I was so fucking sick. I was so sick. And they're like, yeah, we can't put you under. Like, Because her lungs were compromised. Yeah. So, like, I guess the anesthesia. Well, well, the anesthesia. Or, the, like, the like, oxygen or, like, whatever know. they do. Yeah. Basically, you just, like, shouldn't get surgery when your immune system's like that. And yeah. I was so worried, too, because... And it kind of sucked, too, because I was, like, you know, drinking and stuff. And, you know, well, not before I was sick. And so, like, I didn't want to drink, like, two weeks before my surgery just to, like, you know, be safe and... Anyway, so I like at that point I was like, now I'm sick. Time number five. It was time number five. <laughs> I had to reschedule it. And I was like, this is like not supposed to happen. So like, yeah. honestly, I for this time I like honestly like was expecting it not to happen. Like I was just like waiting for something to happen to where I couldn't have the surgery. Oh, honestly, like I didn't know that she was like after the sick cancellation. I didn't even talk about it because I just had this like gut feeling. Yeah. I was like, it's just gonna so, get like, canceled again. Like it's you know when you have something that gets rescheduled so many times yeah. like that you're like, it's just happening. not gonna happen. Yeah. That's how I felt. Because so yeah, I thought because like after that sixth time or the fifth time when you were sick, you were like, okay, this just can't happen. Like mm-hmm. it's, I I'm, I'm, no, you actually thought you were going to die. Like, I think <laughs> at that point you were like, if I go into that surgery room, I will die. You were like saying you had your will finalized. <laughs> you like got a life insurance policy. Like you did all the checks because yeah. you were like, I'm going to die from this surgery. Which is so funny. Cause like, when I was talking to them, she was like, when she's asking me all of this, she was like, do you have like a power of attorney and all this stuff? And I, and I was like, yeah, she's like, wow, not many people like at 25, like have that. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I didn't even know that she like actually rescheduled it to this past Tuesday. Is that yeah. when you got it done? Mm-hmm. And literally Monday I was talking to you at night or something and you were like, yeah, I'm getting my surgery tomorrow. I was like, what? I had no idea. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, like, wish me bye. Yeah. You were mm-hmm. like, you were like, say goodbye to me. I was like, you're not going to die. And all of her nurses and everyone thought she was crazy, too, because she was saying she, she went in there saying, I'm going to die. Like, no, I was and, like, I'm going to die. Yeah, at the, when she went in for the surgery. So, OK, would you not? I, would you not? OK, no, it's fair enough. Like, I, it's a little creepy. And you're like a very big person about and intuition. Yeah, like fuck. like if things are happening, you feel like it's mm-hmm. telling you something. But so. like weirdly, everything went like perfect and I'm healing great. And yeah. like I'm fine. And like, no, shout I'm out good. Dr. Dow. Like, I was in God's hands, God being Dr. Dow, and really, actually, God. No, I think I'm going to schedule my consultation soon with him. Yeah, he's he's just so good. He's such a, like, just nice guy, and, mm-hmm. like, he's just so sweet. He really is just so sweet, and, like, he just has an art, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like that's the thing about plastic surgeons is, like, obviously, you want them to be smart, but I feel like there's a really big, like, artistic side that comes to it where, mm-hmm. like, you want them to have it. You have to have an eye for it. Yeah. Like, I he, mean, like, it's took like... My, he literally, like, recreated my nipple. I Yeah. I mean, I feel like you want every surgeon to be good at what they're doing, but, like, if you give me, like, a little scar tissue inside my body, no one's ever gonna know, but, like, mm-hmm. if you fuck up my face, <laughs> yeah. or you, like, fuck up my body, like, everyone's yeah. gonna know. Everyone's gonna like, know. Like, it, it's... It needs to be done. And I feel like that's why it's, like, one of the most, like... <laughs> important to have a good one yeah surgeon. It's like i feel like i don't want to say anyone can do an open heart surgery but like i feel like you don't need the best of the best but like when it comes to plastic surgery it's i think like it you comes want... down to like the st- there's just like healing you know how they like i feel like the yeah. operation's one thing and then i think the whole other half of it which we can get into this this is a hot topic because i know some inside information um from working underground in the days of working for a plastic surgeon oh you did work for i always forget yeah. about that but and I can't say who because. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I'm not he trying had to get, you, I'm not he trying had to you do some sketchy shit. Should. Yeah, I'm not trying to get sued. But anyways, I think the most important thing is the stitching is what you really care about with the plastic surgeon yeah. because you want them to have really. I mean, that's how you know how the scar is going to look, right? Yeah. You want them to do good. So the surgeon that I worked for, freaking asshole, horrible human would like tell these patients because like that was my big thing when I talked to Dr. Dow was like you are going to be the one stitching me up like I don't want your assistant stitching me up I don't want like anyone else but your hand stitching me up because yeah like it's fine if my boobs look good but the scarring you know like that's like such a big component of the surgery results is like how your scar looks yeah and um 
the surgeon I worked for, he'd promise these people, he'd be like, no, 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 like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then the second he was done with his operation, he'd literally take his gloves off and give it to his surgical assistant and have them fucking do it. And then their scars looked like shit. And then he would be like, oh, we'll just go get laser from our like laser tech. Um, we'll give you a free like eight sessions. And for me, I wouldn't get paid except hourly hourly for yeah, that like you got commission so like yeah. when he would do he would always like that's literally what i was there for was just to be the scapegoat and be like oh like you don't like your scarring like savannah will just go laser it for you like until yep. you like it and then i wouldn't just literally get seven bucks an hour you mm -hmm. know and it was just such bullshit but i remember that was just one thing about him that was so unethical is because he would promise people he'd be the one to sew him up and he never did he always had his medical yeah. assistant or a surgical assistant do it and like that's such a big part of the reason you pick your surgeon is because of this what the scar is gonna well, be that's that's the whole thing about plastic surgery is you yeah. want it to look after like it, you did when you walked in but better you know what yeah. i'm saying like the and like scarring is inevitable but well, the stitching yeah. the stitching is like the most important thing for how the scar heals yes because scars can really like good plastic surgery yeah that scar will fade and like you so won't fast. yeah exactly but if they don't do it well yeah you could like you yeah. want your surgeon to be the one sewing you up mm -hmm. out of like all the time so that's like my biggest advice for people is just like make sure whoever you talk to like just make sure you ask them that before you go under like make like literally make lock eyes with them be like are you going to be sewing me up yeah because that's matters it really does matter mm -hmm. but um yeah i'm really excited so i did my breast reduction we did the brawl fat lipo and then i did the neck and chin lipo and I have to wear this compression wraps for a week. I took a week off work. He told me two weeks, but I think he thinks I do like super like fluffy, like massagey facials. And my first day back, it's just peels, which is not going to be hard. Like if it was like hydrofacials and microneedling, I'd be a little bit more nervous because it's a lot of like moving around the face and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, I'm going to be like in this vicinity. So I'll be fine because I can mm -hmm. like, if I can wash my hair, I can do a chemical peel, you know? Absolutely. Um, And then the next day I do my virtuals from home. So I should be, you know, fine. Yeah. It'll, I'm not worried about it. It'll be like a week and a half before you're doing. Yeah. You never really do anything intensive. So no, but the bruising is pretty gnarly. I'll say oh, that. yeah. This girl looks like she got hit by a train. <laughs> like, I'm not joking. I because she got this one procedure done one time where it made her bruise super bad. It like, was the um, fuck, what's it called? It's for like cellulite, cellulite for butt. stretch marks. What's it called, though? It was injections, right? Yeah, it's injections for the butt. I'll look up. But it was like it made. I was told her because she got it on her butt, and it like looks like a galaxy. It made her ass. I was like, your ass is out of this world because like it literally looked. It was like a actual universe painting. Like it was purple and blue and had stars. Like I was like, what the fuck did they do to you? And this is somehow worse. Like I was oh, like, it's the Q W Quo or whatever it's called. Q W O. But it it must just be because like again, if you've seen videos of lipo, like that. The bruising's gonna fucking happen. Like yeah. they are jabbing the shit out of your skin <laughs> inside the skin. So yeah, it's like yellow, and then it turns like purple, purple and then black, yeah. and yeah. pink, and but, like, all the colors. Wait, tell them your funny story about what, the chin lipo, like when you got in there. Oh yeah, so like <laughs> when I went in, he's like marking me up. I was like, yeah, I want to look like a Kardashian. Like I want to look snatched. He's like, usually when I do chin lipo, like I don't want it to look like you got chin lipo. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I want it to look like I got chin lipo. Like I want people to see me across the street and be like, she got chin lipo. Like that's the point. Like I want yeah, to you look. You want it to be like. I want people to think I got chin lipo. Like I do. Like, and he was like, oh. <laughs> What's the point of getting chin lipo if it's not going to be Because he's very natural snatched. and I love that about him. He's conservative. Yeah. But but like I don't want to have a pudgy under chin yeah. to make it look natural if I'm getting chin lipo. Like yeah, I feel no, like that's like, the whole that point. <laughs> the whole point is like I want there to be zero fat. Yeah. Like I want my skin like to adhere to the muscle. Negative point two five fat. No. Yeah. Fat. I don't know if it's true, but like I read if like they take all the fat out, like your skin will like almost adhere to the muscle, so it's really hard to gain fat there again. That's iconic. That's what I would want. Yeah. That's what I'm going to tell him I want when I go in for my consultation. Yeah. I'm like, actually just sew my skin to the, to the muscle. Yeah. 100%. But no, I think it's so funny when he said that. I was like, no, like, I I want people to know. I know. Like, is that weird? Like, is that not, is that not normal? Like, I was like, it's every... not the 1990s where people like are like weird, like taboo. Yeah. I'm like, do people walk in there? Like, I don't want people to know. I don't know. I feel like every like twenty something year old girl who goes gets chin lipo like wants that like Bella Hadid. Like, yeah, we're like we want people to think we got chin like lipo. My, like that's a my flex. jawline could cut you. Yes. We'll see what it looks like. I don't know how. What, he said he was going to go hard, but 
We'll see. You did. I mean, your neck doesn't look that bruised. I mean, you have some There's bruising, but like retention. Yeah. Yeah, and like my arms are swollen. Tyler bullies me right now. He says I look like Cyrus. <laughs> I did tell her she looks like Cyrus, but her arms are like just so swollen. And then with the compression garment, it's just like yeah, all my fluids making it worse. It's like pushing it down to. And then she has her bracelets on, so it's like giving her the <laughs> Cyrus rolls. <laughs> I wonder if they can see it. Maybe <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah. But are you glad you did it? I'm glad I did it. Yeah. It's the hardest part about it is not being able to hold Cyrus. See, I kind of want her to be, I've said this since day one, I want her to, I want Cyrus to be an only child. Like, I feel like he just gives only child energy. <laughs> like, he's kind of a bully to other babies he when is. he meets them. Like, he's very needy. And I just feel like he, he'd he be I a just, perfect I little only child. So I just, I get that. And I, like, respect that opinion wholeheartedly. But it's just, this is, like, my advice. And this is, like, how I see it. It's, like, Okay, one, like, this is very controversial. We're going to get into it, okay? I don't, I'm, I'm the dad's side of the family. Nobody likes the dad's side of the family. Like, when he has a wife and gets married and has children, like, I'm going to be the dad's side of the family. What are you talking about? Oh, okay, okay, you know? okay, okay, I got like, you, I got you. His wife is going to be the dictator that's like, no, we're going to Thanksgiving with my family. We're going to go to Christmas with my family. You know, like how I am. <laughs> okay, but you win. can't you can't choose to have a girl. Okay, yeah, obviously. But I'm just saying that is one of the re- That's one of my seven reasons. I have seven reasons why okay. I want another kid. That's one of them in the hopes of having another girl. Okay. Number two, makes the family stronger. Okay. When I went to go do like my will and everything and like, you know, who was going to like, you know, if like Lance died, right? And then I like got incapacitated, like, who is going to be the one to like decide if I live or die? Like I had my brother, you know, to put down for that, you know? So if Cyrus didn't have anyone who's going to pick his fucking neighbor, like he's not going to have, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that was one of the things that really like was like, fuck, he needs a sibling is when I did like all of the uh, trust stuff that we did. Okay. And just, but like, I my living will and stuff. And like, who's going to make those like decisions. I would put anyone down in my life. Besides my brother. Okay. That's so mean. It's true though. Like I'm being honest. Like literally you, Adriel, any person, like literally I would find someone on the street first before I put my brother down to make those decisions for me. Okay, well, that's rare. Most people like like their siblings. Um, I don't know about that. Okay. Well, to some, my brother's very level headed. I would totally let him like decide to yeah, put the Yeah, your dad's on me. like, or your brother's like. Very level headed. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, nah, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> be like, pull that shit. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't be emotional about it. He'd be like, she gone, take it out. Um, okay, so that's my second reason. Number three is when I like family games, like board games, they're not very fun with three people. It's more fun to have four. Okay. Board game wise, not a good time. Okay. I feel like these are all the wrong reasons <laughs> to like want another child. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> number four. Okay, when we're making family voting, it's an odd number. I feel like you're it, it, there's no such thing as family voting for you like, guys. Okay. You make the decisions. There's not gonna be family voting. It's <laughs> your way like, or the highway. We're gonna be like Colorado or California. And then, and then like, you're gonna say, I wanna go to California. Okay. I booked the trip. All right, number five. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and debunk all these reasons. <laughs> number five. When you said at Thanksgiving, okay. It seems very sad to have three people and cook all that food. Like, no, not three people. But I feel like eat. I'm going to be at your Thanksgiving every okay, year. Okay, but what if, like, something happened to you? You know? Okay, shit. You ain't blood. I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> I love you. But I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Three people, like, for a turkey, like, that's a lot of, like, you have to make smaller casseroles, you know? So I feel like it's a waste of food. If you have four people, it's, like, makes more sense. Okay? And, like, Hawaiian rolls come in a pack of six, okay? I've stopped listening. <laughs> okay, stop number six reason why i should have another kid okay what if cyrus doesn't want to have kids you know and then what if i'm never gonna be if i have two my odds of being a grandmother are higher okay the last one's really fucked up are you ready reason number seven if something happens to one kid you always have one left oh, okay <laughs> uh, take that back i'm just saying take it back i'm just saying I had to think of one on the spot because I didn't have a seventh reason. I don't. As long as you admit that that it's not going to heal you. It's not. But I just feel like the odds are better. They were like, okay, let's not say one died. Let's say one like becomes a drug addict or one just like turns into like a really shitty human that like just hates his family, hates the world. Like 
you know, then you have another one you can focus on. You know what I'm saying? Because like, what if you have one kid that's just like, like Orion, you know, like okay. your parent, like you're like your brother. Okay. But again, what if it's the first one? Like you could have just stopped after one. Okay. But what if it's not? I, again, I don't know many where the second child is. Yeah. Because like with my family, like they probably would have been fucked if they just had me. But when I was going through all my crazy shit, like my brother was their saving Yeah, but grace. now it worked out. Yeah, but I'm good now. But like I'm saying at the time, like at least like they had that saving grace. So they go, thank God Nick's normal, <laughs> you know? Fair enough. Like Nick's not scratching out our eyes in the, <laughs> in the laundry room family Fair portraits. Enough. You know, you I they had a backfall of like, you know, someone to be like, okay, well, one's, you know, making C's. The other one's making A's. One of them's, you know, smoking crack. I wasn't smoking crack. Smoking weed. The other ones, you know, not. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, you got you got all this. So that's my surgery. Second okay, but my thing is, I was like, you're gonna have to get surgery again after you have your second child. No, I think so. I'm not gonna gain any weight. I'm gonna lose weight, actually. Okay, <laughs> interesting. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> Don't let me know how that goes. <laughs> I'm going to be like those bitches on TikTok where they're like, didn't know it's pregnant. No, it's like, what's her name? Christina Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, who that's like, me. That's who is like next doing pregnancy. like full on like hot yoga in her ninth month of pregnancy. Yeah, that's going like, to be me next time. I don't know how that's possible. That's like insane. That'll be me next pregnancy. Okay. okay. But you can't get pregnant for a year. Yeah, that's fine. I already wanted them three, like three ish years apart. It's kind of far. Okay. Do you not think so? I think the further yeah. are they apart, the less they relate. I think, like, once, like, they're in their 20s, like, it's all subjective. I think okay, it's, like, once yeah, you yeah, get yeah, through yeah, it, yeah. you know, like, as adults, that's what matters. But it's, like, but it's like if, they're, if they're, like, a year, year and a half apart. I don't know if like, that makes, but me and my brother weren't very close. But we also had a lot of odds against us. Yeah, we've talked about that. But I don't know. But surgery is starting to look good. Yeah. That's pretty much it for this podcast. But that's my seven reasons. If you agree with me, uh, you know. I'm telling you guys, if you guys met Cyrus, you would agree with me that he gets. I'm gonna only miss it, dude. Being a mom is the most beautiful fucking thing on this planet. Like it hey, literally, like having a baby is just so. He's not even a year old yet. You have a long li- more in a time. month. He's literally a year and a month. I know, but I'm saying like you still have a really long time. I miss the newborn stage. Mom. I know. I just feel like I. Okay, but are you gonna have 18 kids because no. you just can't let go of the newborn stage? Like, no, well, it's like it's like when you get a here? kitten and then they get old and you just get another kitten and then get another kitten. No, like, I actually have done that with dogs with my mom. <laughs> like so she funny. has four dogs now because you I'm like, like I'm, another puppy. <laughs> yeah, I miss having puppies and like you you get emails for them and they're like you you want another dog too? Not anymore. Oh, good. I was like, no. But the thing is, is I feel like I like had so much trauma with my C-section and I had so much postpartum that like I wasn't aware. Like I like kind of like gaslit myself into thinking I didn't have postpartum depression that I like didn't feel like I could relate with Cyrus as much. And so I feel like I didn't soak up the newborn stage as much. And I feel like I've heard this a lot, a lot of first time moms like it just like you don't you're just like so like overwhelmed with like being a mom for the first time that like you don't really like live in the moment even though like everyone tells you to and like you try it's just like I feel like with the second kid like you just feel more confident like I feel like I was just so nervous and scared and like I feel like I'd just be so much more in tune and confident with my motherly like instincts with the second my second and I would really just like embrace and enjoy that newborn stage like so much more and I think too with like all the weight gain and stuff like I just like was going through a lot of like just crisis of like who yeah. I was and like my life changing so fast and like it just being me and Lance to me and a baby and like it was just like a lot for me you know so I feel like I wasn't my full focus wasn't on Cyrus as a newborn and I wish it was you know I so feel I feel that. like I missed out on that you want to do over yeah I feel like that would like make me like I'd be content if I just had one more chance okay fair enough yeah that's deep and then it on some deep shit. I don't even want one kid, so well, you're a saint for wanting two. Well, you're the godfather. You can just I can't I can I can't be the godfather for both. You have to find another one. I don't think any. I don't think there's a rule. You can't be a godfather for both. Really? I don't think so. I think my brother. Okay, maybe I don't know. My brother has different godparents than I have. Maybe you feel sure. like a lot of friends, but we don't. So okay. <laughs> like you got one option. You got one option. It's Tyler. It could be Nick. No, he's an uncle. You don't make the god. The Godfather's never family. It can be. It can it? Yeah. Hmm. Cyrus's godmother is family. Who's his godmother? I thought it was Tamara. No. That's what you told me because you were like, 
don't worry you'll never have to like have him no that's just like legally like if i died he would me and Lance, if me and Lance died today he'd that's go, the point of godparents no not they don't have that's on paper though no okay but like my my godmother is my aunt and i would have gone to her mm. if something happened to my parents mm. that's always what i thought though yeah no but you're just like the title of the godparent with all the duties yeah yeah i feel like i'm an uncle yeah you're the uncle time to end this podcast okay we love you guys and love you guys. we'll see you next monday Hope you had a great monday yes